Hey guys, Moidog here, and today I'm happy to announce that we finally have V3.2 for Squad. There's no game breaking bugs, no reverts back to 3.1, and I intentionally waited an entire day before making this video just in case something else went weird. But I think we're in the clear. This update not only brings some cool gameplay changes, but quite a lot of optimizations as well. So I'm finally glad that we get a chance to play it. But before we jump into that, I do want to remind everyone that I stream a lot of squad on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash moidog. Between squad leading, running vehicles, some live eye in the sky casts and more, the streams are a lot of fun. So come hang out with us every Monday through Thursday. Or if you'd rather keep it right here on YouTube, I do stream live on this channel every Friday. All right, so Squad V 3.2 has officially dropped, and with it, the biggest change we're getting is almost a complete rework on how the Combat Engineer and Sapper play. Prior to this update, if you were to run over an anti-tank mine, your vehicle would cause it to detonate no matter what part of the hitbox traveled over it, meaning you could have actually missed the mine with your track or wheel, but since you were physically over it, the mine would still explode. I'm going to be honest, I don't think anyone has ever really complained about this. I mean, it's not realistic, but I thought mines were in a pretty good spot. But with 3.2, all anti-tank mines now require the vehicle to actually run over the mine with its wheel or track. This is actually a pretty big nerf to mines in general, since you now have to be more accurate with where you put them. And I can see mine placement moving from the direct middle of the road to now being closer to the sides in hopes that the enemy physically drives over it. But it's not all doom and gloom for combat engineers. I know you guys love your mines. So as a way to counter this nerf, mines are actually going to be a lot more prevalent. There's still a 10 mine cap per player, but now they're not only going to cost less, going from 50 ammo down to 35, but the actual number of mines you can carry in your inventory has been increased. All conventional combat engineers will now have three mines in their loadout instead of one. The Aussie combat engineer, since they do have a difference between a breacher role with only C4 and an engineer with mines, now has four anti-tank mines. Additionally, militia and insurgent sappers will have two mines instead of one. So although you can still only place 10 mines at one time, it would actually be quite difficult to get that many mines on the map due to ammo limitations, rearming, and travel time. But now, one Mat V with 300 ammo, for example, can now give the ability for one combat engineer to deploy all 10 of their mines in one trip. That is a huge buff, and vehicle players will now have to be on the lookout for a lot more mines as they drive around and try to support their team. Finally, the last change to mines is the ability to pick them up once they've been placed. In the past, you would just have to dig up the mine and destroy it if you didn't want it there, but now players can simply dig it up and in its undug state, interact with it and put it back into your inventory. Not unlike a squad leader's rally. Now, what makes this even cooler is that if your mine is the same type of mine that the enemy has, then you'll be able to pick up theirs as long as you have space in your inventory. Insurgents, Irregular Militia, MEA, and Russia all use the TM-62 anti-tank mine. And since it's not uncommon to have these factions fight against each other, you can now go around and do a bit of trolling by removing and replacing enemy mines. Discover an enemy mine? Well, dig it up, pick it back up and put it in your inventory, redeploy it in the same spot, and now they'll have no idea since the mark will be removed from the enemy map. I definitely like this addition to the game and do wish it becomes a bit more prevalent with other weapons as well, like rearming RPGs or RGD frag grenades from enemy ammo crates if your faction uses them as well. That's all for common engineers and sappers, but V3.2 has a couple more kit changes as well, and a few of the non-magnified automatic rifleman kits now get grenades. I do really like this change since iron sights are such a huge disadvantage in squad, and giving players more firepower in the form of frags is typically how other kits are bound, so 100% approve on this one. Something that may come to a surprise to a lot of y'all as you dive into V3.2 is the new sprint mechanic. The devs state that they have updated infantry sprint controls for improved user experience and input responsiveness. They've accomplished it by allowing you to hold or toggle sprint diagonally from ADS. And the game registers that you want to sprint before you physically start moving, so when you do move, you're instantly sprinting. Before, you would have to walk for a second in whatever direction you were headed in, and then re-tap sprint for it to register, and then you would finally move quickly. Personally, I use hold to sprint, meaning I'm only sprinting when I physically press the shift key down. But players that use toggle to sprint have stated that they absolutely hate this new change because when you stop moving, well, your sprint doesn't reset. The toggle is still on. I'm not too familiar with this control since I don't use it, but I guess the preferred version is when you stop moving, toggle sprint should also toggle off and reset. And many players don't like that they will continue to sprint when you start moving again. 
I don't really see this as a huge issue, but then again, I'm not used to this mechanic. And my gut is telling me if toggle sprint normally would reset on stopping the movement, then at least that part of the sprint mechanic should be reverted so it's a bit more fluid for the player that uses it. Let me know if you're in this camp because honestly I have no idea. Now moving on to vehicles we're also getting a pretty big buff to a few Russian variants with a significant damage boost to the KPVT 14.5 millimeter heavy machine gun. This HMG is the one used on BTR 80s, the BRDM scout cars and also some MTLB variants and if you've ever used this weapon you might have thought it's pretty fun to use and personally I love trying to shoot helicopters down with it but any Anytime you would square up against anything more than a Mat V, you were pretty much dead. In the V3.2, the KPVT damage has been increased from 170 per shot to 220. The rate of fire has been increased to 600 rounds a minute, up from 400. Armor pin has been increased from 27 millimeter to 32 millimeter at 500 meter range. And with all that, there has been a slight accuracy nerf from 1.5 MOA to 2.3. Now to make this thing even deadlier, the overheat mechanic for the KPVT has also been reduced to allow for, at a minimum, two full magazines to be fired before overheating, which will make these vehicles a lot more competitive when fighting things like strikers. Now as much as I loved the scout car before, this buff is huge in making it a legitimate armored threat. Still, in testing this, it does seem a little overtuned. In one magazine, you can nearly kill an LAV-25. Now, looking at this weapon, it might actually be very realistic because the LAV doesn't have much armor and the KPVT, it's it, it's a 14.5 millimeter weapon. That's a big round. But when you look at it from a gameplay standpoint, the BRDM is only five tickets. It doesn't need a crewman to operate. A lot of people can one man them and the respawn timer is a lot shorter. I'm really not quite sure if this balanced now, so let me know in the comments below what you think of these changes, because this is a big question mark on this one for me. Personally, I would not be surprised if we got some tweaks and changes to the KPVT in the next few months. Now, other vehicle changes include removing the requirement for a crewman kit if you want to gun the Canadian M113 50 cal, which is a huge buff to its infantry support role as an APC. There are new and improved vehicle smoke mechanics, which look incredible, and you will now get force ejected as a passenger of an open top vehicle if you happen to get fully submerged in water. For comparison, before 3.2, if you were in a Samir car, for example, and drove completely underwater, as you can see, you just kind of chill there underwater as your vehicle will slowly begin to cook off. Now you'll get ejected, and although this doesn't work in closed vehicles, meaning you will have to manually bail out if you do end up in the water, the devs did mention that they are making this a mechanic for all types of vehicles in the future. In line with these water mechanics, we're also having a much better drowning mechanic, which is a sentence I really didn't think I would ever say. So drowning is now more consistent, and simply walking in the water and being submerged should no longer insta-kill you if you are already injured. Now you'll take two ticks of water damage over 14 seconds which should be plenty of time to get out of the water if you accidentally slipped in. And in the past, the biggest problem was if you had a little bit of damage and you were to slip in, you would almost get insta-killed. So now, even if you're down to 5 HP, you should still have enough time to get onto land as well before you get killed. Lastly, the rib boats now have little flags to help you identify whose boat is whose, and they've added a rudder, making it much easier to steer and hopefully prevent beaching. There are a few other gameplay changes like adding in realistic smoke grenade models for the CAF and British smoke grenades, tweaking the Scorpion and M249 iron sights to look a bit better when ADSing, and fixing the animation of the Browning high-powered pistol to click the safety off when you swap to it. However, the biggest thing that you'll probably notice when you boot up Squad V3.2 for the first time is this server menu. It has finally been overhauled to remove those weird looking and unused sub faction symbols that made the entire area look like a jumbled, unfinished mess. Another nice change is when you do get in game, you'll see that the roll loadout and deploy menu have been combined into one. And the kit information for the loadout you're selecting will now appear on the right side of the menu when you select it. This is a great quality of life change for players since many times people aren't quite sure why one kit is different from the other, so having that information on the same page should make kit selection a lot easier. Additionally, you can use your mouse wheel now to scroll up and down on the kit to highlight the specific weapons to bring up the info on it. 
Once deployed, you'll be presented with a brand new compass, and it's a much cleaner one with a dev stating that they wanted to improve readability. At first, I thought it didn't give enough information, but I actually do like the new look. But now, if you were to jump on a mortar or a rocket techie, you now get a much more detailed compass, giving you decimal place directions to really dial in indirect fire. The compass is now customizable depending on your preferences, and you can add a shaded background if you feel that would help visibility. Plus, you now have the ability to move the compass to the top of your your screen, which I can see being a huge help for pilots. If you frequently swap between infantry and vehicles, you can also set a keybind for the compass too if you want. And we also have new enemy repair station markers available for squad leaders and fire team leads. Lastly, there are also a couple new audio changes with V3.2. Squad and command chat are actually split into two separate audio channels by default. And if you're not sure what that means, now command and squad chat will actually come over on only the left or right audio channel, which makes it easier to differentiate comms when things get a little crazy. If you want, you can adjust this on the audio settings here, where negative values mean your left ear and positive values mean right. We also have a new 40 millimeter blast sound when the grenades hit trucks. And it just wouldn't be a squad update unless they changed the AK sound. So here's your new version. Personally, I like it. It's punchy, it sounds good, but at this point, if I'm being honest, I just want to learn one AK sound and stick with it. So please, no more changes. This is perfect. There are also a host of bug fixes and optimizations as well, and quite a few players that I've talked to over the past day have reported much better frame rate while playing, so please let me know in the comments below if you think this update has helped your FPS. I've included the entire list of the patch notes in the description below if you do want to check them out further yourself, but what do you guys think? Are the anti-tank mine buffs a good thing? Are you excited to go check out the new scout car? Or are you just happy you can move your compass around? Let me know, and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace.